going on YouTube? Today I'm going to be talking about Docker and uh, I'm going to be talking about some of the things that we can do with Docker and I thought we would get started with a couple of videos to see what Docker is capable of. Um, so I guess let's get started. Uh, first things first, I'm running a, on a Mac so uh, Docker is not native on, on OS X. There is uh, kind of an intermediate step that we'll need to, to do here and I um, hope you're familiar with Homebrew uh, that, that's the package manager that I use and um, for OS X one thing we'll need to do is we'll need to uh, we'll need to install boot to docker and you can do a brew, uh, brew install boot to docker um, I already have this installed so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna run that there but uh, but it is available and um, once you do that, you can uh, you have to bring up. So there's one thing that you're going to need uh, before boot to Docker. You're going to need to get uh, VirtualBox. Um, I also got VirtualBox through Homebrew, so you can actually just I think I brew search uh, VirtualBox, and I'm pretty sure it was available. So I did that. Yep. Oh, it's through uh, through Cask. So if you're not familiar with Cask, you might want to check that out. But basically, the only difference is, is you'll do a brew Cask install, and then VirtualBox Cask is a uh, plugin for Homebrew that will allow you to install like physical applications. So you can install Chrome, or in this case, you can install VirtualBox. Um, so, anyways, if you've got uh, VirtualBox up and running, uh, then you have uh, Homebrew, you can uh, install boot to Docker, and once that's installed, um, there's a couple of different things you can do. The first thing you're going to have to do is you're going to have to do a uh, boot to Docker init, and um, that basically will create the, the Docker VM that you'll use, and uh, then you can start using Docker. So, I've already got that all set up. Um, a couple of uh, real quick commands just so you're aware in case there's any issues with docker um, one is boot to docker you can do um, status and in this case you can see it's running um, you can do a restart you can uh, stop it you can start it if it is stopped um, you can shut it down uh, basically this is just a headless VM here and um, that's where all the all the docker is being being run from. Everything that you're doing with Docker is being contained within that virtual machine. So um, another another uh, command that you might want to know is uh, boot to Docker I IP and that will tell you the IP address of the um, the VM. All the networking is already taken care of. Uh, it's pretty nice. You don't have to worry about any of that stuff which will come in handy later. We'll see um, in a couple of videos later down the road uh, why that's nice. So on to Docker. Um, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, basically, everything will be prefixed with Docker, um, and and I'm going to go ahead and do the uh, the Hello World here, and I'll kind of just break it down, and then we'll call it a day after we've done that, um, and then we can come back later and start doing something that's a little bit more complicated. So. The idea here is that Docker is just a container that um, a process or an application can run inside of. Um, the way that I think of Docker is it's kind of like uh, an object-oriented uh, development environment. Um, that's the way that I'll be using it. There will be uh, a lot of different containers and each one will host their own application service part of the stack well, I, that that's really what I'm getting out of it so um, we can see later how it all comes together so anyway I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna run the uh, the hello world here so you guys can see see what that's all about and then like I say I'll break it down so we can we can understand what's happening so the hello world is docker run and then we can say something like Ubuntu um, and then I'm just going to say echo hello docker and then we go ahead and run it and there you have it 
that right there is the very first uh, Docker container you can run. I mean, that's basically the hello world. So, what happened here? Well, let's take a look. We started this whole thing off with Docker run. Uh, obviously, that should be self-explanatory. Docker, you're going to run a container, and you're going to do something. So, Ubuntu, um, what that is, is there is um, containers that are already built into Docker. It's They're contained in what's called Docker Hub, and it's kind of like a GitHub for containers. So, when I run Docker run Ubuntu, what's going to happen is it's going to look to see if I have the Ubuntu... Uh, container or the image on my computer. If I don't already have it, then what's going to happen is it's actually going to download the Ubuntu image and then it'll use the the latest version of it. Um, I'll, I'll get to that in just a second. You can understand what I'm talking about. So anyways, this right here is the, uh, the base image that you'll be running whatever it is. So, echo hello world. Well, we know that if we do an echo uh, hello world here that all it does is it just spits out what I said to echo well the same thing is happening right here the only difference is is that instead of piping this out to um, our terminal here on the local machine what it did is it, ex uh, it executed this echo hello docker inside of this Ubuntu container so and then what happened was after we did that it went ahead and it shot out the uh, the contents of what we said to echo right here in our uh, command line but it's important to note that this didn't happen this didn't get executed on the host machine this got executed from within the docker container alright so now that we've seen that um, you notice that when I ran that it didn't actually download the Ubuntu image and that's because I already have the, uh, the Ubuntu image um, on my computer but just to show you what happens if we do this hello world without the image, I'll go ahead and remove the Ubuntu image and then uh, I'll run it again. So the way that you can see the uh, the images that you have on your local machine, you can just run docker images. And that will show you a list of all the different images that you have available to you um, on your local machines. So basically if I run any of these um, Ubuntu, MySQL, Tomcat, Java, Jenkins, any of those, if I run any of them, um, I'm not going to have to download it because that image already exists on, uh, on my local computer. Now you'll notice another thing too here, there's a tag. Um, so in this case, when I ran Ubuntu, it ran the Ubuntu latest, which is this particular one right here. Um, and the reason that it did that was because I didn't specify a tag. The way that you would specify a tag, you can say uh, docker run Ubuntu and then do a colon. In this case, I can say 14.04 and then echo hello docker. And then when I run that, um, it's going to do the same thing. But the only difference this time is instead of running the latest Ubuntu, this time it ran the 14.04 base image. So that's really the only difference. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to remove um, Docker RMI. Doc, uh, Docker RMI just means remove image, basically. Um, and I'm going to say Ubuntu. Ubuntu. And then now when I remove that, Docker images. Okay, now you see here that we don't have the Ubuntu latest anymore. It got rid of that particular image, which is this one right here. So, I don't have that anymore. Now, I'll go ahead and I'll run this again. Docker run Ubuntu um, echo hello docker. Now, see, it's saying, oh, well, I don't know what you're talking about. What is this Ubuntu that you're talking about? So it reaches out to Docker Hub, and it says, oh, okay, here we go. And then what it did was it pulled in that Docker image, and then at the end of this, you can see it ran what I asked it to do. If we look again, um, Docker images, we can see that uh, Ubuntu latest is back on our machine. So there it is. So that right there is Docker at its core. That is the absolute fundamental of uh, Docker and what Docker is all about. As you'll see, um, the further you dive into Docker, the more complex it'll get. And uh, it, it's, 
it's a really fascinating um, technology, and, and I'm having a lot of fun learning about it. Unfortunately, I'm not, I wouldn't consider myself an expert or anything like that, but I am learning how to, uh, how to utilize it more in my own environment, and uh, hopefully we'll, we'll be able to continue making a couple of videos here, and we can kind of see how I'll get it all set up, and, and hopefully these videos will help you, because like I said, I've done a lot of uh, looking around on YouTube, and I didn't find anything that was real, like, clear for, you know, basically explain like I'm five. That's kind of what I wanted to do. So um, if you do have any questions, feel free, leave me a comment, just shoot me an email or anything like that. And I'd be happy to help. And, uh, and hopefully this will, this will get you interested in Docker and maybe get it uh, running in some of your, your projects you've got going on. So, um, all right, just keep a lookout because I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do a couple more videos here as we go on. Um, and I guess I'll see you next time. All right, thanks a lot.